Hello and welcome back. And in this next video, we are going to be going over the citric acid cycle, all right? Also known as the Krebs cycle. So just a brief review of what we just looked at. We looked at the first process of cellular respiration, glycolysis, and we looked at the bottom line, all right? So glucose, a six carbon molecule, is split in half to create two three carbon molecules of pyruvate, all right? The most important thing from this is not that we get two molecules of ATP, but the most important thing is that we load up NAD plus with electrons and reduce NAD plus into NADH. This can fly off to the inner mitochondrial membrane where embedded membrane proteins participate in electron transport so that we can make a ton of ATP, all right? So we also learned that pyruvate has to get modified into a molecule called acetyl-CoA. And this acetyl-CoA goes off to the citric acid cycle, which is found in enzymes not embedded in the, member, in the inner membrane, but rather in a region inside of this inner membrane, this compartment called the matrix, right? Now that is where we get out our diagram, which shows basically the bottom line of the citric acid cycle. So this is not the detailed citric acid cycle. This is the citric acid cycle bottom line. Okay? So just like we did with glycolysis, this summarizes the most important points of what occurs during citric acid cycle. Okay, so in the lecture, I said that acetyl-CoA all right, this two carbon molecule with a CoA group, right? This is like wood that's being added to a fire, okay? Now the dying embers of the fire are a four carbon molecule called oxaloacetate. Okay, so this is the spent fuel of the fire. It's the dying embers of the fire. And when we add acetyl-CoA, these two molecules, two plus four, are going to hook up and become a six, one, two, three, four, five, six, carbon molecule called citrate, AKA citric acid. All right? Now, acetyl-CoA is bringing in with it its electrons in these bonds. So what's gonna happen is that we are going to continue to lop off CO2. So we're gonna remove two CO2 molecules and that is going to leave us with a four carbon molecule, okay? Now, what do we do with the electrons in these bonds after these carbons go away as CO2 molecules? Well. And here, I apologize, this is a mistake. This is supposed to be NAD+. All right, the electrons go to NAD+, and they reduce NAD+, into NADH. All right, so don't forget that whenever we cut off these carbons, we can load those electrons onto NAD plus and reduce it to NADH, okay? This is a common theme which we're gonna see over and over again, okay? Here's the four carbon molecule after we've lopped off those two, lopped off those two CO2s. And another bottom line of this process is that we get a little bit of ATP when we modify this four carbon molecule and turn it into oxaloacetate, okay? Another thing which we get is this molecule of FAD becoming FADH2, okay? So this is another electron carrier. And just like NADH, these molecules are going to go off and they're gonna drop off their electrons 
at the electron transport chain. All right, so that's gonna go fly off. And from the citric acid cycle, these guys are gonna drop off their electrons at proteins that are embedded in this inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, so very quick summary, what happens? All right, acetyl-CoA is like adding fuel to a dying fire, all right? Oxaloacetate is this four carbon molecule. We lop off the CoA, the two carbons hook up with the four carbon oxaloacetate, so we have a six carbon citrate. Every time we break off a carbon, we release electrons that get loaded onto NAD plus and reduce it to NADH, all right? In this process, we make a little bit of ATP, but the most important thing is that we get electrons loaded onto our carriers, NADH and FADH2. Now, after we've stripped as many electrons as we can off of this four carbon molecule, oxaloacetate can then hook up with another acetyl-CoA, all right? Now, when we come back, we're gonna find out what we do with all this FADH2 and NADH.